Alright guys, in this video we are going to be talking about graphing polynomials by hand and in particular using the rational root theorem. Okay, so this will be extra practice. We've made a video on this in the past. So this will just be extra practice. Now in a perfect world, okay, we would be able to factor our polynomial here. We'd be able to get the zeros and then we'd be able to put those zeros on the graph. Remember, the zeros are where it's crossing the x-axis. So when you're factoring by hand, you want to try to find the zeros first because those are going to act like points for you. Because I can put those points on the x-axis and then I can go ahead and start graphing it. All right. But in this particular problem, you're going to find that, well, this can't be factored, right? Right now, that can't be factored. So we're going to have to use the rational root theorem. All right. And now, before we do that, let's just use polynomial M behavior. Again, we talked about this in the previous videos to determine the basic shape of this graph. Okay, so we know here that our A value okay, is going to be greater than zero. And remember, the A value is going to be your coefficient, all right? of your highest degree here. So in this case, I have x to the third power, so I have an a value here of one, which is greater than zero. And then what else do we know? Well, we know that the degree is odd. And again, you can use tables for this. They make tables that um, cover polynomial and behavior. Uh, we did it in the previous videos as well. So if a is greater than zero and it's odd, that tells us that we're going to have a shape that looks something like this. Okay, meaning as x approaches negative infinity, the function will also approach negative infinity. And as x approaches positive infinity, the function will also approach positive infinity. All right, so we can expect to get a shape like this when we graph it. So using polynomial and behavior is useful because it can allow you to make sure that you're on the right track while you're graphing it. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna put this shape just up here so we have it to reference. Okay, so we're looking for a shape that looks something like that when we graph. All right, so knowing that, knowing that we can't factor this polynomial, we're going to have to use the rational root theorem. And again, we've covered this in previous videos, but in case you forgot, rational root theorem is simply just P over Q, where P is your constant term, okay, and Q is your leading coefficient. All right. And we're going to get factors of both of those. So we're getting factors of both of those. So starting with our constant, some factors of negative 6 are going to be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, <clears throat> and plus or minus 6. Okay. And some factors of our leading coefficient here are going to be plus or minus 1. Okay, at this point, we're just going to divide them out, and these are going to tell us some possible rational roots here. Okay, so when we do this, we're going to get, we get plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 6. All right, and these are going to be possible rational roots. Remember, the rational root theorem does not test for irrational or imaginary roots. And that's why I always say, like I mentioned in my previous videos, our goal here is to bring this down to a quadratic. Okay, that's our goal. Once you get this down to a quadratic, we don't want to keep testing these rational roots. We want to go ahead and factor it, use the quadratic formula, complete the square, because that will give us the definite answer. All right, you don't want to waste your time testing possible rational roots here because it's a possibility that this has an irrational or imaginary roots. So the goal is to bring it down to a quadratic. And in order to bring it down, we have to use synthetic division. So when we divide one time here, this will naturally go down a degree. So instead of having a degree of three, it will be a degree of two, and that will be a quadratic. And then we can move on to factoring, um, completing the square, uh, the quadratic formula, whatever's gonna work for us at that point. So the goal always is bring it down to a quadratic, all right? All right, so what we want to do here is write out our coefficients. We're going to use synthetic division now. So 
So you want to make sure you write out each one of your coefficients and be sure if you skipped a term, you have to put a zero in for that coefficient. So for example, I went from x cubed to x squared to x to my constant. I didn't skip a term, so I don't have to put any zeros in for my coefficient. But if you did skip a term, so for example, if you went from x cubed right to x, you would have to put a zero in for that x squared term because it's it's skipped. All right. But again, in this case, we have no skips, so we can go ahead and just write our coefficients. All right. So we're going to bring down the one, bring down the two, bring down the negative five, and bring down the negative six. Okay. Again, we're just going to test out now these possible rational roots. Okay, so this can be kind of a long process. You have to kind of guess and check here. Our goal is to have a remainder of zero. If we have a remainder of zero, that tells us that, yes, that is going to be a rational root. So let's go ahead and set this up. And let's just pick here. Um, maybe we'll get lucky. Let's pick negative one. All right, let's see if this is a possible rational root. So again, using synthetic division, we bring down one, so negative one times one is negative one, and then two plus negative one is going to be one. Negative one times one, negative one. This will be negative six. Negative one times negative six is positive six, and we lucked out here because our remainder is zero. So what this tells us, yes, negative one is going to be a rational root. And again, that's a point on the graph. It's crossing at negative one. So I'm going to record these values so we have them, so we know that x equals negative one, all right? And now that we divided it and divided evenly, we have a remainder of zero, we know that this naturally got brought down to a quadratic. So for example, we have x squared, x, and now our constant. And at this point, like I said, we don't want to keep testing these possible rational roots. We want to go right into factoring or um, quadratic formula, completing the square, because that will give us the definite answer. Again, this does not test for possible irrational or imaginary roots. All right, so once you have it down to a quadratic, don't waste your time. All right, so I'm going to erase this work here, and I'm going to rewrite this so we can go ahead and try to factor it or complete the square or um, use the quadratic formula, whatever will work for us. So we're going to bring this up, we're going to have x squared plus x, and then minus 6, all right? And we're going to erase this because we already have this recorded. And let's try to factor this now using the AC method. <clears throat> so using the AC method here, A times C. Well, that's going to be 1 times negative 6, so negative 6. What two numbers when I multiply are going to be negative 6, but add up to 1. So that's going to be 3 and negative 2, right? When I multiply the 2, it's negative 6. When I add the 2, it's 1. So since my a value is 1 here, we can put it right in the factored form. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to have x plus Three and then x minus two, okay? And again, we're solving for the zeros here, so this whole thing needs to be set equal to zero, all right? And then we're just gonna take each one of our factors, set them equal to zero, and solve. So we have x plus three equal to zero, and x minus two equal to zero. So here we'll have x equals negative three, and here we'll have x equals positive 2. All right. So again, those are other zeros that we can go ahead and put on our graph. So I'm going to go ahead and record these as well. So we have negative 3 and we have 2. Okay. All right. Well, knowing that, we can go ahead and start graphing this now. All right. And let's go ahead and put on our clearly defined points that we have for this polynomial. The first point I want to put on is, I want to put on the point for the y-intercept. So if you look at your original polynomial here, right? notice that if we plug in a zero for all our x's here, right? so if I plug a zero here, here, and here, I'm going to be left with negative six. 
And that's where it's crossing the y-intercept. Remember, wherever this crosses the y-intercept, the x value will always be zero. So if we take a zero and plug it in for the x, that will tell us where it's crossing the y-intercept. So in this case, if I plug a zero into the x, it's going to be crossing at negative six. So that's an easy point to put on there. So I'm just going to put on negative six. That's one point and a half. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so there's one point. Then I have my points here, my zeros, right? Those are going to be points as well. So I have negative one. Okay, that's going to be a point. I have negative three, so two, three, so negative three. <clears throat> and then I have positive two, so one, two. Okay? Well, at this point, what you want to do, okay, we know the basic shape, right? Here's our basic shape we're looking for. So we know that we're going to have something that goes like this, right? But to make this a little bit more accurate, I want to choose a point in between this zero and this zero so I can determine how high it's going up, okay? Likewise, I want to choose a point between this point and this zero so I can see how low it's going, okay? That way we get a more accurate representation of our graph. So let's erase this. All right. So I said I want to test between this zero and this zero. So that's going to be, I'm going to pick negative two here. Right? I want to pick negative two because this is negative um, one, this is negative three. So let's pick negative two and see what, how high this graph goes up. So I'm going to do f of negative two. Okay, and this will be equal to negative two cubed plus two times negative two squared minus five times negative two and minus six, all right? So be careful with your signs here, there's a lot of negatives. All right, so when we do this out here, negative two cubed, well, what is that going to be? That's gonna be negative two times negative two times negative two. So that's gonna be negative eight, all right? Negative two squared is gonna be four plus two, so positive eight, all right? These are gonna cancel out. Then we have a negative five and a negative two, so that makes plus 10. And then we have a minus six. So again, negative eight and eight cancel out. Then we have a 10 and a negative six, so we're left with four. So when I plug in negative two, the function goes up to four. So at negative two, I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, and make a point. Okay, now let's just get that last point here, okay? So again, I said we're gonna test between our point on our y-intercept and this zero. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's erase this work. And <clears throat> so we're gonna test one. This is zero, one, two. So we wanna test one here. So f of one equals uh, one, cubed plus two squared minus five times one and then minus six. All right, so same thing. Let's just do this out. One cubed is just one. This will just be two. We have minus five and then minus six. So let's go ahead and do this and simplify it down. So now we have three minus five minus six. So we have a three and a negative five. Well, that's gonna make negative two minus six. So we have negative two and a negative six. Well, that's going to make negative eight. Okay, so we get negative eight here. So we're gonna go on one and we're gonna go down negative eight. So this is six right here. So one, two more will be eight, negative eight. So let's bring it down here, okay? And again, using what we found for the polynomial and behavior, we have that basic shape, we can go ahead and create what we have now. So your last step is to simply connect the dots. So starting here, so I'm trying my best to draw this as straight as I can. All right, we're gonna go like this, and we're going through here, and then back up. Okay, so we have our polynomial now graphed by hand. 
All right. So that is how you go ahead when you're graphing polynomials by hand using the rational root theorem.